The Big Ten Conference released the new schedule format for 2024 and 2025. And I, I think when you look at it, not a lot of big surprises for Nebraska because um, there's no more divisions. And we know that you're going to play in every Big Ten stadium at least once every four years. I think the big thing is the way the Big Ten Conference chose to flex the locked-in games, and we're going to get into that more in headline number two. Okay. Um, but, you know, there there are no breaks. I mean, for I think for any team now in this conference, you're not going to backdoor in very often with an easy schedule the way the league is doing it now. Okay, well, here's the way the league is doing it. And this paragraph is the is is critical. I mean, this is from an ESPN article, and this, I mean, I know that people like to look for reasons to complain or try their hardest to find inequity in everything, but you can't. This is really hard. it's really hard to do with with how the Big Ten did this. I think Sean, the Big Ten nailed it, and I would. And it's sort of that that mindset's encapsulated in this paragraph. Beginning in 2024, every conference pairing will take place at least twice in a four-year span, once at each member school's home stadium. That's it. I mean, I, you know, they went through, according to ESPN, the Big Ten reviewed 171 versions within the flex protect plus model. And I mean, they did, I mean, they, that, I'm, I'm, this was exhaustive, the process they went through. And I think they nailed it. I just and think they nailed it. You know? And nobody's going to have more than one LA trip a year. Right. Um, I, I think that's key, you know, to eliminate this long travel, obviously UCLA and USC, I think they had to build those schedules um, to give their players adequate time for, for the traveling and, and whatnot. But I think when you play nine league games too, it allowed all this to happen. Like, can you imagine the SEC for at least the one year they're going to try to manage and build schedules with only an eight game schedule when you have sixteen league teams? I mean, it's it's really not. A, you, you you could have so many things go wrong in the standings because of the lack of games you're going to have by just playing eight versus nine. And yeah, the not yeah, and you know the. I think the, the the college football playoff rankings are going to be the key component now to place the proper teams into a conference championship game. But there might be some years where you might want to be the third place team in the SEC or the Big Ten um, if you played a good schedule. And you could still get into the college football playoff by not having to play in the Big Ten championship game. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to roll those dice, but I guess it could. it definitely could happen that way. It is a, I mean, I'll tell you, it's the thing that really dawned on me yesterday was how cool this conference is going to be. I mean, USC and Michigan playing, USC, Nebraska, you know, Nebraska going to USC, USC coming to Nebraska, UCLA, all of that. I mean, oh, Michigan and USC, Michigan hasn't played at USC since 1958. Th those are the kind of things that are, are amazing in a regular season game. Michigan and USC, those very vintage helmets, will lock up, and it and it's a it's really a it's going to be fun. Now it's great for the fans, for the coaches. It's really tough. This is tough. It's like the NFL now. I mean, it's Sean. You talked about it before. How, like you know, Pelini always won nine games at Nebraska. It's different now. I, I mean, I don't know how you exactly how you'd compare it but it almost feels like eight wins now or seven wins would be the equivalent of nine back in the day well Bo Pelini never had to play a nine game conference schedule that's part of it that's part of it and, and so now look at the schedule I mean look what you're look what you're dealing with everybody knows by now probably Sean the 2025 Nebraska schedule I mean look at look at that thing I mean you have Ohio State and USC and Iowa and Michigan and UCLA I mean that's gonna it's gonna be a taxing it's gonna be taxing physically and mentally and emotionally yeah that that 2025 schedule i mean just thinking about playing at ohio state and at usc i mean it, it's incredible You're right um, but nebraska has always talked about wanting to to be the best or play the best they're going to get a chance to and that's all you can ask well i appreciate sean 
Nebraska's posture in this, which is like Trev Albert spoke on statewide radio Thursday night. There's no complaining. I mean, this is this is what it is. And I think I think they would like their media core to kind of take that on too, not be not not try to pick out inequities. I don't think there are inequities because of what I read earlier that every conference pairing will take place at least at least twice in a four year span. I don't see any inequity. Now, some people will say, yeah, but SIP, uh, how come Nebraska only has one protected rival? Uh, Iowa has three. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why that matters that much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and, and that leads me into headline number two. Let's talk about okay. protected rivalries. Right. Uh, you mentioned it. Nebraska will have just the one. Um, they will play Iowa as their lone protected game. Now, mm-hmm. there are other what they call two-play games where they're going to play the same team twice over a two-year period or UCLA and then Minnesota. And Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. Yeah, Iowa I was mean, locked in, but right. then they have two other two-play opponents. Um, so th- that's the interesting part. Like Penn State has no locked-in opponents. Like Penn State could have easily said, yeah, we want Rutgers or we want Maryland because those are logical games for them to play. Even Michigan State's got some history, but I think Penn State's like, why are we going to waste a game every year with Rutgers? Like, does that, does anybody wake up in the morning and say, I've got to see Penn State Rutgers? No, no. Um, I I think that's what they try to do. The games that need to be on this schedule, um, Michigan, Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, you know, there's a, there's a couple like. Uh, Purdue, Illinois. I, I guess there there must be a trophy game associated with that, but that that's one that kind of doesn't really. It's the Cannon Trophy, so it's a trophy game. And mm-hmm. Iowa, um, I felt like came out of this the big winner. I mean, they were able to preserve three games: Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Nebraska. I think if Trev Alberts and he said this on the radio show had his druthers, Nebraska would have been able to preserve Wisconsin as an annual game. Um, they are not. And I, I don't know why. Um, I, you I know why. I mean, think about Wisconsin, Sean. Okay, so Iowa-Wisconsin, that rivalry is over 100 years old. Okay? Okay? That's that's one of Wisconsin's protected games. The other protected game is Wisconsin-Minnesota, which is the most played rivalry in Division One football. That's the Floyd of Rosedale. Or excuse me, that's the Paul Bunyan's axe. And I've watched that game pretty much every year. And that you can't, you you do not wipe that away. Wisconsin, Minnesota is a must. It's one of the, like I said, it's the most played rivalry in Division I football. Iowa, Wisconsin, again, over 100 years old. You just don't, you don't say goodbye to that. That's Nebraska, Wisconsin doesn't have any history. And Nebraska hasn't held up its end of the bargain. They, Nebraska was going to get one protected game. And they, in Iowa, you know, Sean, here's the thing with those protected games. Both sides have to agree to it. I mean, Nebraska can identify Wisconsin as a protected game, but do you think Wisconsin would identify Nebraska? You were at the game the last time they played. It wasn't, there wasn't much buzz at all with that game. There was more interest in the opening of deer hunting season than that game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the, the tamest I've seen Camp Randall in the several times that we've been there since 2011. I mean, think about that first game in 2011 with Russell Wilson. That was probably the most electric Big Ten atmosphere I can remember. Right. See, I mean, some of this is, it's, I mean, I'm not saying Nebraska's at any fault. They just haven't been in the, the league long enough. Those other games, like I said, are over 100 years old. They've been playing. It's, it's built up over time. Nebraska just has, hasn't had much time. They're lucky. I mean, they're lucky they have that border. And some people don't even call Nebraska-Iowa rivalry. It's debatable. I mean, we debate it every summer when times get slow. I I tend to think of it as a rivalry. Um, and I'm glad it's protected. Well, it, it's also a trophy game, though, the Wisconsin-Nebraska game. But, you know, it's, just, it's a trophy game that was forced. So it, Come it's, on. Yeah, it's forced. Uh, the Freedom Trophy. Like, mm-hmm. Michigan State, Penn State's technically a trophy game, right? And that that was not protected, right? Uh, yeah, I, that, that was because not. Penn protected. State doesn't have a protected game, right? I mean, the protected games, most of them are pretty obvious. You mentioned a few. UCLA USC is has to be protected. That's a, that's college football. Michigan Ohio State, that's college football. Michigan State Michigan, 
you know, that ha that has to be protected. Illinois Northwestern, I suppose. Maryland Rutgers, you know, obvious. I guess it's kind of an obvious, but not very exciting. You're right. Illinois Purdue. I don't know exactly what goes into that, but I think the, I think the eleven makes sense. It'll be, um, you know, just you know, it, it's going to fix a lot of things too. The way they've done this, like Nebraska's only played at Indiana one time, one time mm -hmm. in the history of joining this conference. Yeah. Michigan's only played in Lincoln two times since Nebraska's joined this league. The Huskers have only played at Maryland one time um, since coming into the Big Ten Conference. So there are some just inequities that we've seen. And I do feel like the East-West, it ran its course. I, I, I just think it created a lot of schedule and equity in this league, especially when Purdue and Indiana was a protected East-West game. So it just made your chances to see Indiana – that much harder as an opponent, for example, because they're protected to play one game automatically because uh, of that East-West thing with those teams. So I, I am glad that the divisions are gone because I do feel like the crossover thing really was real. Like you, you know, depending on your crossovers, that was the difference on winning the West most of the years in this league. And we're not going to have to talk about that anymore. One more year, one more year of divisions. And then it's, then it's wide open. I mean, yeah, it's the, for Nebraska, you have to, you want to crawl up that ladder. I mean, with 16 teams, you're you're pretty far down the ladder if you're 10th, you know. Um, so you got a bit of a you got a bit of a hike up that ladder right now. My other question though is, are we going to see new schedules again by 2025 or 2026 if the Big Ten adds more teams? You could, yeah. This could this could change dramatically. Like this could change because this Pac-12 situation is getting interesting. I mean, they they continually, you know, kind of have this wait two weeks mentality on on their media rights deal. And today again, the Pac-12 conference says, "Wait two weeks. We're gonna have a media rights deal." Well, they, I mean, it's clear what's going on. There's a lot that's going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of disagreeing. A lot of teams probably aren't really wanting to commit to this grant of rights agreement, if you're Washington or Oregon, you, you don't want to commit to a bad Pac-12 media rights. So you're trying to get in the Big Ten. Um, so it, it's going to be fascinating to watch if these schedules that we broke down yesterday are just going to get redone again another year from now. God, that's a great, that's a great point. That's a great point, Sean. And, and they, again, they reviewed 171 versions within this Flex Protect. Now, yeah, they, it could get all revised again. That's a good point.